Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $40. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Look, it's a bird! It's a plane! No, it's... <laughs> Hello guys, it's Shitkin Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and I'm really, really, really happy to bring you this video. So as for today's video, we actually have a video of how to fix stuttering or stutters happening in games and mostly that's it, happening in games, yeah. And it's because I constantly have people on my channel, usually on the comment section obviously, telling me something like, okay man, I have a really good setup and I, I am constantly getting stutters. In some games I just can't stop having stutters, although that I, that I have, for example, a top tier CPU, top tier GPU, top tier RAM kit, everything top tier, even my, my desk is top tier with RGB and that shit, and still I have stutters. Why? And that's basically why I'm making this video, to try and help you out. So don't expect a magic powder that you can just use and fix all your problems because that won't happen. Okay, this is just a guide that I made to help you the most I can in these situations while you're having stutters. Now let's cut the bullshit and let's go to the first tip. Well, the first tip is CPU bottleneck, but in terms of core count. And why core count? Because there are several types of CPU bottleneck. For example, you may have a CPU bottleneck in terms of single core performance, where the games, where the games for example, require a high single core performance and your CPU has lots of cores, but the IPC is low. The single core performance, the instructions per cycle are low, so the single core performance is lower and blah, blah, blah. So basically what that bottleneck leads is to low FPS, but as long as you have the core count that, it, the, that the game engine needs, you won't have problems, so you'll have low FPS, but the stutters at least shouldn't be happening, okay? Now, in terms of core count, the stutters do happen. Let's imagine, for example, that you have a CPU with four cores and four threads. Let's say, for example, an i5 6400 or 6600K or even the 7600K which is a four cores, four threaded CPU, okay? You have four cores, four threads. The CPU is not that bad in terms of IPC or single core performance, but, and I repeat, but, it has only four cores and four threads. But the game engine actually needs at least six or eight threads to function properly. What may happen is that you will see most of the times your CPU at 100% or close to it, let's say 90% to 100% and that will cause stutters. Because your CPU slash RAM conjunction just can't deliver enough data to feed the GPU. The GPU will have low GPU usage because the CPU can't get enough data to the GPU and at the same time you'll have stutters because the CPU is at max utilization. So GPU utilization at max is good, CPU utilization at max is bad. You should never reach max or close to the max utilization or you'll have stutters. Well, one of the fixes that can actually help you is to overclock your CPU. Because although the CPU still has four cores and four threads, it will be able to do more work with those same four cores and four threads because it is overclocked. So higher frequencies mean more work in the same amount of time with that exact IPC, with that same CPU. So it would or will to some extent help you not having that much stutters, okay? But the real fix is to actually get a new CPU because if you're having a CPU with low core count, four cores, four threads, and even the four cores, eight thread CPUs are just starting to get, and are starting to be not enough in nowadays, in 2022, they're not enough. Almost all games will use eight threads or more. And if you have a GPU powerful enough to push higher FPS or in a certain game that just needs lots of cores and threads even at lower FPS, for example, games like um, online games like, for example, Warzone, Battlefield games in the multiplayer part, of course, uh, it will need a lot of CPU power, so it will need lots of cores and threads to perform well. And if your CPU does not have enough threads, it will stutter, okay? So the big fix is to get a new CPU if you can. If you can't, 
just overclock the current one you have. Now, the second one, which is also important, is RAM capacity. And once again, I'm not talking about RAM frequency. RAM frequency can cause stutters if, and I repeat, if, the RAM frequency is really, really low. But if you're running anything above 2666 MHz, that won't be the problem. So I'm talking about RAM capacity because once again, RAM frequency can usually cause lower FPS numbers, but won't cause uh, stutters. So performance drops and so on won't cause that. Well, will cause low FPS, but not stutters. But the RAM capacity will in fact cause stutters. Imagine your computer only has, for example, 8 gigabytes of RAM. But the game needs, for example, 8 gigabytes of RAM to work properly. But you have 8 gigabytes of RAM and one or two of them are already being used by your Windows installation, by your processes in the background. So, if 2 gigabytes are being used, you actually have 6 gigabytes left. And the game can't work properly with 6 gigabytes. So even if you have a top tier CPU and a top tier GPU, let's say for example, you have a, a 9912900K or a Ryzen 9 5900X and you have for example an RTX 3090, your computer would still stutter. Well, not with a 3090, I will explain that in a bit, but just do it! Well, most likely your computer would be stuttering in most cases even with a top tier CPU and top tier GPU because you don't have enough RAM. And even worse, if you have only 8 gigabytes of RAM and single channel, so only one stick of 8 gigabytes of RAM, it will be even worse. 8 gigabytes of RAM single channel in 2022 will make your computer perform like shit. Ooh. Now, things that can actually help you in this scenario. So if you have, for example, uh, one stick of 8 gigabytes, you should just get another and get dual channel instead of single channel because if you actually have just one stick of RAM, at least up to the DR4, where it will, it will be only single channel, if you have only one stick, you will have half the RAM bandwidth. And that will affect also the CPU performance, that will affect your system performance in an overall state. So yeah, you always need dual channel, at least two sticks of RAM. That will help definitely in some scenarios, as you can see, for example, in this video, with Warzone running completely fine with only eight gigabytes of RAM, but those eight gigabytes of RAM are dual channels, so two sticks of four gigabytes. And the other two things that may actually help you is having, for example, an SSD disk and having at least eight gigabytes of VRAM. So, and that because when the system is low on RAM, it will actually use more VRAM. So if you have low memory on your RAM, the system will use the RAM in your GPU to actually help and not stutter at all and perform better overall, okay? That's how the system works. And if you have an SSD, for example, an SSD for the system, an SSD for Windows, when the system is low on RAM, it will use the SSD as kind of a trading cache, okay? It will send data to your uh, SSD and then we'll ask for it when it is needed. So you have an HDD with Windows installed, the HDD is quite slower. So uh, if the RAM actually sends data to the disk and then retrieve it, the process of doing that will be way slower because the HDD is slower. If you have an SSD with Windows installed, the SSD is several times faster than the HDD. So the trading of data will be way faster and will definitely help you in this scenario when having a low amount of RAM available. But the final fix is to get at least 16 gigabytes of RAM, dual channel, two times eight gigabytes of RAM. That's the best advice I can give you right now. The third tip is hard drives. So your system hard drives. This is a very, very important part that most people can't, most people don't seem to understand. I don't really know why, because this, this is, is the, the basic. basic. So if you're running your game from an HDD, if the HDD is low, is slow, for example, the HDD can do only uh, 80 megabytes per second or 100 megabytes per second. But the game, to stream the, um, the, the textures, for example, for the game to actually load the data, it needs more. Then you'll most likely stutter. And this happens mostly if you have a really, really old HDD, for example, the newer HDDs, let's say two terabytes HDDs and four terabytes HDDs, are completely fine to, pr to play normal games if 
you're using an SSD as your main system. If you're using, for example, an HDD, even if a four terabytes one with Windows and games at the same time, you'll have stutters. The HDD just isn't fast enough to get Windows working in the background and playing games and play games at the same time. On some games, you'll have stutters, on others not, but in most recent games, you'll definitely have stutters because of that. But well, the fixes are, if you can't, and I repeat, if you can't get uh, an NVMe for gaming or a, an SSD for gaming, just get an SSD as your main drive of Windows, so as your Windows drive, and get the HDDs only for the games. So the HDD will work only for the games, and the rest will be handled by your SSD. But of course, if you can, ditch the HDDs and work all with SSDs and NVMEs, okay? If you don't need a huge amount of data and you actually have the money to get all SSDs, do it. No noise, faster and lower power draw. If you can't, SSD for Windows, HDD for games. Well, the fourth one is poorly optimized games. <laughs> Yes, because there are some games that are so, so poorly optimized, they are so poorly coded that even the top tier system will have problems with them. I can give you an example. For example, when PUBG was released, I had the RX 480, and I repeat, RX 480. And the RX 480 nowadays can play PUBG at 1080p Ultra with no problems at all. But in that time, PUBG was so poorly optimized that even my RX 480 couldn't run the game at 1080p low over 40 FPS. That's crazy, just due to poor optimization. And that happens to a lot of games nowadays. Sadly, but it does. And sadly, the only thing you can actually do in this scenario is to wait for updates and be sure to have all your system updated in terms of BIOS updates, chipset drivers, which are your motherboard, drivers, just make sure to have your system updated just as a way to clear your mind and to know if it, the problem is indeed the game or not. That's the best advice I can give you. It's not much, but it is a sad reality. The fifth one is driver settings. And well, driver settings are really interesting things to look into because, for example, in terms of the AMD drivers, which are the ones I know the most, when you actually install the drivers with a new and clean installation, it will give you, for example, three options of the tuning profiles. You have, for example, the default one, you have the gaming one, and you have the eSports one. Now, the default one is the one I advise, for example, you can watch this video of how to adrenaline 2021, I will actually remake the, this video for 2022 as soon as AMD release RSR, so the Radeon Super Resolution, something, something like that. I will remake this video. But for now, just watch this one because I explained the settings that you should be enabling or not. Now, if you actually choose the gaming or the eSports settings, it will indeed activate some settings like, for example, Radeon Anti-Lag that can actually cause you stutters, but not real stutters. And this is the fun part. Sometimes you perceive stutters looking at your monitor, of course, but sometimes the stutters are just on the monitor side and not on the game or the GPU side. What, I, what I'm saying with this is that sometimes you need to look a bit more into it. So for example, install MS Afterburner. If you already have it, just go to the options and activate your, your frame time chart where you can actually watch your frame times. And if you don't have anything with spikes, so for example, if you don't have your chart like this, okay, with spikes, then you're not having real stutters. You're having real stutters just on your monitor side and not on your GPU side. And if that happens just on the monitor side, then those stutters, those stuttery feeling may be caused by options like Radeon Anti-Lag, for example. That's a really interesting thing. So once again, if you want to, to see the options that you should enable or not, just watch the How to Adrenaline 2021 video because it may help you clear your mind of some doubts, okay? But yeah, overall, that's your fix. Install MS Afterburner, see if your, if your stutters are really in-game or not. If they're not in-game, then the other tips before don't apply and your problem is monitor side, so disable Radian anti-lag and any other options that can actually maybe causing that, okay?
That's what I can advise you. Yeah, the final tip is your motherboard bias. Because, well, there are two things that can actually help you get rid of stutters in your BIOS. The first one is to remove your CPU power restrictions. This isn't something that happens on the AMD side, but it is definitely something that happens on Intel side. For example, if you have a non-K CPU, like your, like for example, the 10400F, 11400F, or 12400F, what happens in most motherboards is that those CPUs are power restricted. So they aren't performing as they should because they are limited to a certain power draw. But if you remove that power draw cap, the CPU can actually perform as it should, obviously going above that power draw, but performing way better. And well, in some BIOS like the MSI BIOS, they actually ask you right in the beginning of, of the BIOS installation, if you have a stock cooler, a tower cooler, air cooler, or if you have a water cooler. You can just right out of, out of the thing, just select the water cooler because it will automatically increase your power cap. If you have another brand motherboard, just look on Google how to remove the power restrictions on non-K CPUs and you'll be fine. And the last tip is basically the above 4G decoding, which is an option that you actually need to enable in order to activate smart access memory or resizable bar. So even if you don't have smart access memory or resizable bar in your motherboard, activating the above 4G decoding may in fact uh, increase your smoothness and remove your stutters. I have lots of people in the comment section in other videos uh, of older videos for example, in this video that I made of the setting that could actually remove your stutters or fix your stutters, uh, I have lots of people saying in the comment section that actually activating the above 4G decoding made the, their Warzone experience be much better, made their Fortnite PUBG experience me, be much better, okay? So that little setting can help you. So go to your BIOS, go usually to your PCI BIOS, to your PCI Express options on BIOS Advanced, uh, PCIe connectors and so on and activate above 4G decoding. If you want to see how to do it properly, watch this video uh, because I show step by step what you need to do. And well guys, that's basically it for today. Sorry if the tips were actually hard to follow. I hope they weren't. If you have any doubts, leave your doubts in the comment section because I will answer as fast as I can, as always. Um, I really hope I helped you with this video and all I can do is this, help you by doing this video and help you in the comment section. Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share this video. Once again, thanks a lot for watching because that really helps the channel and see you in the next one which will be a new CPU, new GPU comparison now with the RX 6600 versus 6600 XT versus RTX 3060. See you in the next one guys.